Chapter 148 Like Mines The proprietor of the sand-scouring waves was a graceful and demure woman. She stood there, beautiful and elegant. She looked young, nothing like the popular image of a gaudy old procuress. Despite her youth, she wasn't the least bit insipid when dealing with guests. She was well-spoken, and she smiled charmingly. Young Master Yuan, have you brought friends with you? When she saw Yuan Luoyu, she greeted him with a smile and curtsy. A faint, elegant fragrance wafted into the air, soothing the heart. Huang Qianjun instantly burst into laughter. He could tell at a glance that Yuan Luoyu was a frequent customer. With an old hand like him around, they could see what the brothel really had to offer. Of course, they wouldn't need to worry about deception or trickery either. This worked out perfectly. Yuan Luoyu coughed dryly. Madame Fangqiu, this time, I've brought a highly distinguished guest with me. You mustn't be the least bit negligent, or I, Yuan Luoyu, will be the first to hold you accountable. This declaration wasn't the least bit polite. However, it came from the mouth of Yuan Luoyu, one of the highest status young masters in the entire city. Who dared doubt the weight of his words? The proprietress, Madame Fangxiu, hurriedly nodded. Young Master Yuan, please rest assured. Her eyes sparkled like water, and her gaze immediately landed on Su Yi. She could tell that when Yuan Luoyu interacted with him, he felt a bit ill at ease, and that his expression was odd. How could she possibly miss that he was the highly distinguished guest Yuan Luoyu spoke of? But Madame Fangxiu was too considerate to pry. When prominent figures visited a brothel, there was no greater taboo than asking about their identities and backgrounds. Young Master Yuan, I'll have to trouble you and your two honored guests to follow me. Madame Fangxiu led the way into the sand scouring waves personally. Master Su, if you please. Yuan Luoyu hurriedly clasped his fist and gestured ahead. When she saw this, Madame Fangxiu was stunned. Even more than before, she dared not be negligent. When they entered the sand scouring waves, they were greeted by a chorus of female voices, like a flock of orioles and swallows. It wasn't loud or lively in here at all. The main atrium was huge, luxurious, and ordinate. Atop the distant jade platform, a group of young, beautiful musicians sang and played various instruments. The sound of flute music filled the air. When Huang Qianjun entered, he didn't know where to look first. But then, young women dressed as vibrantly as flowers and butterflies appeared to wait on them, one per guest. Each had perfectly applied makeup and wore differently styled dresses and skirts. They were graceful and light on their feet, and their gentle fragrance wafted into the air. This was the picture of prosperity, beauties surrounded them on all sides. This place is on a far, far higher level than the brothels of Guangling City. Huang Qianjun sighed to himself. He already felt his blood surging. Yuan Luoyu was calm by comparison, and he followed Madame Fangxiu with the practiced ease of someone in familiar territory. One beautiful young woman after another recognized the second young master of the Yuan family, and they approached with amorous looks in their eyes until he finally waved, dispersing the crowd. Tonight, he was hosting Master Su. How could he allow serving girls of that level to wait upon such a distinguished guest? Wouldn't that reflect badly on him, Yuan Luoyu? After passing through a curved hallway, the commotion faded away, replaced with a serene atmosphere. Huang Qianjun couldn't help but ask, Young Master Yuan, where are we going? Yuan Luoyu flashed him a mysterious smile. You'll know when we get there. Su Yi's expression hadn't wavered once since entering the sand scouring waves. He just walked with his hands behind his back, calm and at ease. 
he'd yet to say even a single word. This inevitably put enormous pressure on Yuan Luoyu. Master Su's standards are undoubtedly high. What do I do if he doesn't take an interest in any of the women here? Just as this possibility occurred to him, the scenery changed up ahead. A pavilion built above a lotus pond came into view. It had an antiquated charm, and the lamps cast flickering shadows. When they entered the pavilion, they saw clouds of incense, a red carpet, and old-fashioned inkwash paintings of orchids, bamboo, and chrysanthemums. There were twelve serving girls already waiting for them. All of them knelt, and they each wore a form-fitting skirt of pale blue gauze. They looked meek, or bashful, or seductive, or dignified, or cute. All of them had top-class good looks. In young Master Huang's estimation, although they were just servants, each was beautiful enough to play a leading role at any brothel in Guangling City. Welcome, honored guests. The servants lowered their beautiful heads and got up to greet Su Yi and his companions. When he saw this, Su Yi was mildly stunned. Then, he shook his head. Only those influential authority figures would appreciate a move like this. Master Su, please, take a seat. Yuan Luoyu laughed and gestured invitingly. Su Yi didn't hold back. He simply sat at the head of the table, in the seat of honor. The two girls kneeling beside the head of the table instantly rose. One fair, unadorned hand brewed tea, while the other poured him a glass of wine. When she saw that all of them were in their seats, Madame Fangxiao smiled. Young Master Yuan, what arrangements would you like for tonight? The usual, said Yuan Luoyu. No, wait. Give them the extra special treatment father uses to entertain important guests. Huang Qianjun was briefly stunned, but before he could ask, Yuan Luoyu whispered an explanation. My father will occasionally entertain guests with a taste for revelry. Of course, they only come here for fine dining and entertainment. Please don't overthink it, young Master Huang. Huang Qianjun thought to himself, if he really did do anything else, would he tell you? You're his son. Madame Fangxiao obviously wasn't expecting that. She said hesitantly, Young Master Yuan, I'm afraid that others have already reserved the girls at the top of our roster. She trailed off. She just saw Yuan Luoyu furrow his brow. She instantly flashed him a charming smile. But of course, since Young Master Yuan has come to visit, we would never do anything to ruin his merriment. I'll go make arrangements right away. With that, she turned and hurried away. I won't lie to you, Master Su. Normally, when I come here, I dare not use my father's name to my advantage, but tonight is different. If I don't host you properly and my father finds out about it, he'll skin me alive. Yuan Luoyu laughed heartily. Su Yi pointed at Huang Qianjun. He's leaving for Blood Thistle Yao Mountain with the Spirit Marshal Marquis tomorrow morning. All you have to do is ensure he's well taken care of. Yuan Luoyu was briefly stunned. He exclaimed, Brother Huang, you plan to enlist? Do you know how bitter and cold life in the army is? Besides combat and training, all you can do is fritter away your days telling dirty jokes with a bunch of coarse old men. There's no fun to speak of, and finding a woman is harder than ascending into the heavens. Are you sure you can take it? He worked under the Cloudlight Marquis as part of the Red Scale Army, so he naturally was qualified to say such things. If you can endure, why can't I? insisted Huang Qianjun. He <laughs> he. Yuan Luoyu grinned wickedly. Then there's no harm in telling you that a few old soldiers love nothing more than fresh, tender recruits such as yourself. You have to be careful. 
They're all hardened killers, the type to lick the blood from their swords. If they take a fancy to you, their methods are violent and barbaric as can be. Huang Qianjun shuddered, and he hurriedly cut him off. Young Master Yuan, don't be disgusting. If anyone dares try that on me, I'll kick his hope of future descendants to smithereens. Find the original at. Yuan Luoyu couldn't stop laughing. But, because Su Yi was there, he dared not be too brazen. He just silently pressed his massive hand on the nearest serving girl's soft, delicate thigh. Her face flushed red, but she didn't object. Huang Qianjun was much the same, he dared not be too unrestrained either. Or rather, he couldn't quite relax. The reason was simple, Su Yi's prestige was too great. Although they were all about the same age, on an instinctive level, they saw Su Yi as their senior. Su Yi naturally picked up on this. He couldn't help but laugh. People really did divide themselves into groups. Birds of a feather really did flock together. This was true even in leisure. When people of unequal status gathered, who dared indulge without restraint? Who dared reveal that side of themselves? Before long, Madame Fangxiu led a group of women into the pavilion. Huang Qianjuan's eyes instantly lit up. Without exception, every last one of them was stunning, from their figures, to their faces, to their appearances. All were the cream of the cream of the crop. Even rarer, each had their own distinctive charm. Their ranks included a fiery stunner, an aloof and icy beauty, and a girl whose pitiful demeanor tugged at the heartstrings. Even Yuan Luoyu couldn't help but sigh with appreciation. I certainly have nothing to complain about. But when he looked at Su Yi, he realized that Su Yi looked just as calm as before, with no sign of emotion. He didn't look at all tempted. Yuan Luoyu was just about to say something when Su Yi rose. You two have fun. I'm going to go looking for a certain someone. Then, he turned toward Madame Fangxiu. Take me to see Cha Jin. Madame Fangxiu had been nothing but smiles, but suddenly, she started, and her expression shifted subtly. Young lord, Miss Cha Jean is an artful courtesan of noble and unsullied character, and she's never accepted customers. Please understand. But Su Yi had already walked in front of her. He wrapped his right arm gently around her snowy white shoulders. Let's go. Had anyone else done this, everyone would have called them brazen and reckless. After all, Madame Fangxiu was the proprietress of the sand-scouring waves. Her status was right there in front of them, and her guests included no shortage of prominent figures. Who dared be rude to her? Even the lineup of beauties was stunned. At first, Madame Fangxiu was ashamed and angry, but when she sensed the power emanating from the hand on her shoulder, her heart sank. She instinctively glanced up and saw a pair of distant and indifferent eyes, like the gaze of a god. An unprecedented, suffocating sense of awe rose within her, and an indescribable chill coursed through her heart. Her whole body tensed, and her hair stood on end. Do as you're told, and I won't harm a hair on your head. As he spoke, Su Yi tugged her outside. Madame Fangxiu was dazed and bewildered, and waves of shock coursed through her heart, to the point that she forgot to even struggle. Rather, she dared not struggle. Her instincts told her that if she dared resist, the young man in blue would have no scruples about killing her. Yuan Luoyu fell briefly silent. Then, he said valiantly, Brother Huang, Master Su told me to show you my hospitality. You choose first. He could tell that Sui had come here for other reasons. He just couldn't help but wonder who Cha Jin was and what she'd done to attract Sui's attention. 
Uh. Huang Qianjun repressed his scattered thoughts, then started evaluating the lineup of beauties. When Su Yi mentioned his desire to see Cha Jin, he instinctively assumed that there was going to be trouble tonight. But then, he wasn't worried about Su Yi. If anything, he felt sorry for Cha Jin. You could have offended anyone in the world. Why did it have to be Brother Su of all people? But soon, Huang Qianjun cast Su Yi out of his mind and cleared his throat. He then pointed at four beauties in succession and laughed, them. Yuan Luoyu froze, then exclaimed, four of them? Huang Qianjun drained his glass and puffed up his chest with pride. Just four, that's all. That's nothing, right? Yuan Luoyu's eyebrows shot up, and he felt a hint of wicked glee. Master Su commanded me to ensure you're well taken care of. How could four possibly do? He waved over the remaining beauties. All of you, remain here. Tonight, you'll all wait upon my brother Huang together. Huang Qianjun froze, but he wasn't overcome with delight. On the contrary, he was a bit worried for his life. Who could possibly enjoy such an abundance? But then, what man would admit defeat when it came to something like this? Chapter 149 A Mantis Blocking a Chariot The Ode to Elegance Pavilion The ethereal sound of a zither floated through the air like the music of the heavens. Looking from a distance, the lamps of the pavilion's floor were brightly lit, casting wide shadows. Young Lord, Cha Jin is currently playing the zither for an extremely high-status guest. If you recklessly forge ahead, I'm afraid you'll bring disaster upon yourself. Madame Fangxiu looked conflicted. She whispered, how about I go first and announce you? Su Yi relaxed the arm he had wrapped around her shoulder. No need to trouble yourself. I'll go up on my own. With that, he proceeded straight toward the ode to Elegance Pavilion. When she escaped his demonic claws, Madame Fangxiu sighed in relief, but when she saw what he was doing instead, she was instantly frantic. She chased after him, crying out, Young Lord, you can't go in there. Madame Fangxiu lowered her voice and said frantically, I'll be completely honest with you, even if young Master Yuan's father were here, he wouldn't dare disrupt that honored guest's good time. Hey! It was as if Su Yi were deaf. Madame Fangxiu was so angry, she gnashed her teeth, and her almond-shaped eyes blazed with fury. I have to explain myself to that honored guest. If this guy is really so dead set on seeing Cha Jin, fine. But I simply can't let him implicate the sand scouring waves. Madame Fangxiu took a deep breath to steady herself, then chased after Su Yi. For imposing figures with powerful auras stood outside the doors to the second floor of the pavilion, all of them imposing. However, when they saw Su Yi approach, all of them were stunned, they clearly hadn't expected this. When Madame Fangxiu caught up and saw this, she hurriedly started to explain, Your Excellencies, when this young lord heard that Cha Jin was here, he insisted on coming to see her. I couldn't convince. But before she could finish her explanation, an unbelievable scene played out in front of her. All four men standing guard outside the door bowed. Greetings, young Lord Su. Madame Fangxiu's red lips quivered, and her beautiful eyes widened. So it was you guys. Su Yi furrowed his brow. So, does that mean the distinguished guest inside is Zhou Zhili? These four were none other than Zhou Zhili's personal attendants, and their leader was Zhang Duo. Indeed. Zhang Duo nodded, but he was a bit befuddled. He found it hard to believe that someone like Su Yi would show up at a place like this. Su Yi said no more. He just pushed open the door and walked on in. 
Zhang Duo and the others naturally dared not stop him. This was an expert even the sixth prince revered like a deity. How could they possibly stand in his way? Madame Fangxiu couldn't help but wonder, just who is this boy? She didn't know whether it was curiosity or some other emotion, but she instinctively followed him in. The hall was clean, elegant, and spacious. Zhou Xili wore jade-colored robes and lay sprawled out and languid with his resting against a young woman's thigh. Off to the side, the stunning attendants were busy making tea and pouring wine. And not far away, they saw Cha Jean in her simple but elegant white dress, her long hair flowing like the clouds. Her slender fingers gently strummed and plucked the zither strings. She looked gentle and defined, while the notes of her zither were like pearls falling into a jade plate, the rhythm clear and ethereal. Zhou Xili watched the beautiful musician, completely transfixed. He felt loose and relaxed, both body and mind, like he'd reached the pinnacle of sheer bliss. Young lord, please, have some wine. A servant passed him a cup. Zhou Xili accepted it and was just about to drink it when he saw someone push open the door. The music came to an abrupt halt and the idyllic, sensual atmosphere was instantly ruined. Zhou Xili's brow furrowed in anger, but when he saw just who it was who'd barged in, his fingers trembled, spilling his wine. He instinctively sat up and exclaimed, Sue. Young Lord Sue? The young woman beside him frowned, looking pained. It seemed that, when Zhou Xili abruptly sat up, he pressed his hand against her thigh. Even so, she endured in silence, she dared not utter a sound. Su Yi scanned the hall, then said flatly, You sure know how to enjoy yourself. Zhou Xili hurried to his feet, looking a bit sheepish. I was just sneaking a little leisure into my busy life. I came here to relax, but I'm afraid I've embarrassed myself. Greetings, young Lord Su. Cha Jean rose in greeting, but a momentary panic flashed across her face, and she was instantly on guard. Even she never would have guessed that Su Yi would find her here. When Madame Fangxiu saw this, her tongue felt dry, and her scalp went numb, she'd already guessed that this blue-robed youth's origins were extraordinary. But she never would have guessed that even this lofty noble from the Jade Capital would be so tense and nervous in front of him. What surprised her even more was that Cha Jin seemed to recognize him too. All of you, leave for now. I want to have a nice chat with Miss Cha Jin, said Sui flatly. Zhou Xili keenly picked up on the fact that something wasn't quite right. He waved. All of you, step outside. You are not to return without my orders. There were eight peerlessly beautiful attendants inside the hall. All of them lowered their heads, bowed, and left in a hurry. Even Madame Fangxiu dared not linger. She turned and left. You go too. Su Yi glanced at Zhou Zhili. Zhou Zhili was briefly stunned, but then he smiled. Then I shan't disturb you and Miss Cha Jin any longer. With that, he turned and left. Throughout this exchange, he didn't so much as glance at Cha Jin. This was decidedly callous. After all, he'd been intoxicated by her beauty and entranced by her music mere moments ago. Yet the moment he sensed that something was off about the situation, he just upped and left. He didn't even dare hesitate. Young Lord, are you here on a punitive expedition? Without any outsiders present, Cha Jin felt no need to hide anything. Her expression was clear and calm, with no trace of her earlier seductive charm. This morning, someone ambushed me with a talisman sword. Who was it? I trust you know better than anyone, said Su Yi with an air of cold indifference. Make him come out, or tell me where he is, and I won't make trouble for you. 
Otherwise, I guarantee you a fate worse than death. The expression on Cha Jin's beautiful face shifted dramatically, and she took a deep breath. Young lord, since you've been so direct, I won't beat around the bush either. My senior apprentice brother left today at noon. If I'm not mistaken, he's already approaching the imperatorial provincial capital. He ran away? Su Yi's brow furrowed. He never would have guessed that someone capable of activating a talisman sword would be such a coward. Cha Jin was visibly conflicted. She sighed, he couldn't harm you even with a treasure on that level. In his shoes, I'm afraid I would have made the same choice. Then why didn't you run? asked Su Yi. Cha Jin's pink lips pursed, and she said helplessly, I've already organized my luggage and prepared to leave. Who would have guessed that His Sixth Highness would show up just before my departure? If I left with no regard for the consequences, all the work I've done thus far would go to waste. She paused, then laughed bitterly. Besides, who'd have thought you'd show up this quickly? You underwent a fierce battle just this morning, only to show up here tonight. Sui pondered out loud, but from the look of you, it seems you're not at all afraid I'll get revenge. Why is that? Cha Jin took a deep breath. It's simple. My senior apprentice brother has already fled. If I die, he'll surely avenge me. She looked up and stared Sui straight in the eye. She'd already regained her clear-headed composure. I'll admit that I'm no match for you, but what if I told you that a cultivation faction, one that transcends the mundane world, stands behind me? Would you dare kill me then? Then, as if everything were perfectly normal, she took a sip of tea. Any intelligent person would, upon hearing those words, realize that harming her would result in enormous consequences. This was the source of her confidence and the reason she dared face the enormous threat that was Sui head-on. Her keen senses noticed Su Yi's brow furrowing slightly, just as she'd expected. The Wheel of the Moon sacked, asked Su Yi. That's right. Cha Jin nodded. As the top holy land in the Great Way, its status is so lofty, only the Great Zhou's hidden dragon sword sect is comparable. When she said this, a pride coursed through her heart. She was the inheritor of a sect that transcended the mundane. This, more than anything, was her biggest pillar of support. But against all expectations, Su Yi burst into laughter. Do you think that's enough to threaten me? As he spoke, he approached Cha Jin. The pupils of her beautiful eyes constricted. Young Lord Su, that wasn't intended as a threat. I just wanted you to weigh the pros and cons, it's not worth throwing away all pretenses of cordiality over this. At the very least, I'm extremely unwilling to become your enemy. Sui said calmly, never mind you, not even your Wheel of the Moon sect is qualified to become my enemy. His tone was casual, yet his words were proud and disdainful. A paltry little faction of cultivators that, despite having their roots firmly embedded in the mundane, dares proclaim themselves above it all? Are they worthy of becoming Su Xuanjuan's enemies? The very idea is ludicrous. As she watched Sui draw near, Cha Jin's pretty face was instantly solemn. Her heart sank, but she was stunned, too. Is there really nothing that scares this guy? Two knives silently appeared, one in each hand, each shaped like crescent moons and glinting with terrifying light. Su Yi's eyes flashed with disdain. A mantis trying to block a chariot. Find the original at Pori.com. Clang! The humming of his sword reverberated throughout the room as Su Yi drew guiding mysteries and stabbed the air. Cha Jin dodged without hesitation. During her last visit to Humble Tranquility Cottage, she witnessed Su Yi's terrifying power firsthand. 
He almost suppressed her, and she was naturally aware that in a head-on clash, she was simply no match for him. But what really shook Cha Jean was that, although Su Yi's attack looked simple, it was like an inescapable net, blocking off every possible escape route. There was nowhere to run. Helpless, all she could do was wave her knives and attempt to block. Wham! The sound of metal colliding into metal rang out. Cha Jin's arms went numb, and both knives flew from her hands. Before she could react, the sharp tip of a sword struck like lightning, stopping abruptly just an inch from her throat. Cha Jin was so startled, her breathing stopped, her eyes widened, and her mind went blank. How could a single attack be this terrifying? What level of skill is this? What level of cultivation? Her petite frame quivered. She couldn't even speak. Her pride, confidence, everything she relied upon seemed to pop and disappear like soap bubbles, replaced with abject terror. In the face of this level of power, plotting, caution, and threats were all nothing but jokes. It didn't matter how thoroughly you planned and plotted. Life and death came down a single swing of a sword. During our first meeting after entering the prefectural capital, I told you not to provoke me, yet you refused to listen. Should I call you stupid? Or just ignorant? Su Yi's gaze was calm and expressionless, as if Cha Jin were nothing but an ant. Chapter 150 Soul Binding Rope The light in Cha Jin's eyes dimmed. Why not kill me? Su Yi Sheath Guiding Mysteries If that senior apprentice brother of yours finds out I've taken you captive, will he come save you? Cha Jin was briefly dazed, but she quickly understood Su Yi's intentions. She couldn't help but sigh, I understand. You plan to use me as bait to make my senior apprentice brother show himself. You're not so stupid after all, said Su Yi. Suddenly, his hand shot out, and he wrapped his fingers around Cha Jin's snowy white neck. He held her aloft, her back facing him. Cha Jin's expression changed dramatically. What are you doing? The hand clamped around her neck, and her entire body went soft and limp. She could barely breathe, nor could she exert any strength at all. Now, with her back facing Su Yi, in this position and at this distance, she felt an indescribable sense of shame and indignation. Su Yi ignored her. He just extended his right index finger, pressed his fingernail straight against the snowy white skin of her back, and started outlining. A sudden, piercing pain made Cha Jin go rigid. Her breathing sped up, and she couldn't help but wheeze and moan. And as Su Yi's index finger traced lines in the soft flesh of her back, thread after thread of blood-colored wounds intertwined, gradually forming a complex and bizarre bright red pattern. Like layer upon layer of overlapping flames. It was dazzling but intimidating. Throughout this process, Cha Jin's slender frame quivered, and sweat beaded on her delicate features. Her bright eyes flashed with shame, resentment, and pain. From time to time, the piercing pain was so intense that she couldn't help but gasp and pant for breath. Her breathing was heavy and ragged. Against the utter silence of the Great Hall, the sound was enough to make any man's blood boil. Suddenly, Su Yi's nail paused. It was almost like the bright red inscription carved into Cha Jin's back was breathing. It lit up, then extinguished, over and over again as it gradually merged into her skin. A. -a, -a. Cha Jin cried out, and her beautiful eyebrows knit together. Her face flushed red, and she bit down on her lower lip, hard. Su Yi relaxed his grip on her neck, and she slumped to the floor, unable to move. Her dress was already drenched in sweat, and beneath the fabric, her petite frame quivered. She felt dizzy, as if her soul was convulsing. 
It felt swollen, as if it might burst. The pain was so great that her eyes were blank, and the sound of rapid gasping and heavy breathing filled the room. Suey let out a breath of turbid air, then sat languidly off to the side. He picked up a teapot, poured himself a cup, and drained it. What is this? Quite some time passed before Cha Jean came to her senses. She could no longer repress her terror, and her voice trembled as she spoke. She could sense that a formless power had invaded her soul, yet for some reason, she was completely powerless to resist it. There was undoubtedly nothing more terrifying than the unknown. Cha Jean wasn't afraid to die, but she was afraid of a life worse than death. It's called a soul-binding rope. It's an unpresentable, paltry little secret spell. If you were an origin Tao cultivator, you could easily refine it. Cha Jean was stunned. An origin Tao cultivator? But those are top-class existences, earthly immortals. What? What does it do? Cha Jean couldn't help but ask. Sui said indifferently, it's simple, it will make your life worse than death. Every three months, the spell's power will erupt. Every time it erupts, you'll feel as if ten thousand swords were carving up your heart and flaying your flesh. It's more than ordinary people can endure. If you cannot dispel the soul-binding rope within half a year, it will fully erode your soul, and you'll become little more than a walking corpse. In the end, you'll have no choice but to watch as your skin festers and rots into a puddle of pus. Sui's tone was calm and indifferent, but Cha Jin couldn't help but tremble. You're a devil! She shrieked, and her will collapsed. Her beautiful face was bleak, her terror and rage readily apparent. Only the truly brave could stare death straight in the face. Cha Jin clearly didn't have that kind of courage, especially since what she faced wasn't death, but a life worse than death, a cruel and brutal end. Su Yi glanced at her. I forgot to tell you, but once the spell takes effect, the user can influence the rope binding your soul with a single thought. The sensation is much like being whipped. Almost as soon as he said this, Cha Jin cried out in agony. No! She couldn't help but clutch her head, fall to the floor, and writhe in agony. For the first time, she understood what it meant for pain to extend all the way into your soul. It was truly worse than death. In the world of martial artists, killing someone didn't amount to much. At the very least, death was an ordinary part of life. But Su Yi's use of secret spells to control another's life and death? That was unquestionably horrifying. Cha Jin finally understood at a deep level just how terrifying the young man she'd offended was. He was like the devils they heard about in stories. Quite some time passed before Cha Jin's piercing agony dispersed, but the torture had already left her disheveled. Her hair was unkempt, and she looked down on her luck and pitiful. When she next looked at Su Yi, her eyes were full of fear. From this day forth, your life is in my hands. When my anger dissipates, I might very well grant you release. Until then, if you dare disobey my orders, don't blame me for my poor manners, said Su Yi flatly. Cha Jin repressed her shame, bitterness, despair, and indignation. She lowered her head and said in a quavering voice, yes. She never wanted to experience that inhumane torture ever again. What terrified her even more was the discovery that with the soul-binding rope in place, she couldn't even consider rebelling. Cha Jin was an inheritor of the Wheel of the Moon sect, but Sui's casual display of control over life and death and that cold cruelty reminiscent of deity fully cowed her into submission. The realization that her life was entirely out of her control was incomparably humiliating, but at the same time, a faint and inexplicable feeling sprouted within the depths of her heart. It was much like how, 
After being broken in, a young beast would submit in the face of absolute power and start showing signs of tameness. Outside the Ode to Elegance Pavilion Joe Gili stood with his hands behind his back, looking up toward the latticed windows of the second floor. His expression was subtle and complex. Zhang Duo and the others stood beside him. None of them spoke, but their expressions were strange. Just now, they heard the sound of clashing metal emanating from the second floor. All of them were startled, they even thought that Su Yi and Cha Jin were fighting. But before long, they heard a series of indistinct, agonized cries. From a distance, it sounded more like heavy breathing and moaning. Hearing that, any man's imagination would run wild. Zhang Duo and company even wondered if a scene of forceful domination was playing out in the pavilion. In that case, it would really get the blood pumping. But it seemed that His Sixth Highness was in a rather poor mood. Zhang Duo and the others' keen senses picked up on Zhou Xili's erratic changes in expressions. However, he said nothing, and they didn't know what he was thinking. Still, none of them were stupid enough to ask. The woman he had his sights on had likely fallen into another man's demonic clutches. In his shoes, who could possibly be happy? As their imaginations ran wild, the sound of footsteps emanated from afar. You're not done playing yet? Ching Jin had arrived, her voice lazy yet magnetic. She wore men's robes and carried a jar of wine. Her sharp, bright eyes carried a hint of intoxication, and she looked idle and relaxed. Her beauty was obvious and stunning, magnificent as a distant mountain, with full red lips. Add that to her tall frame and, even in a man's clothes, she was a powerful assault to the senses. Marshall Aunt, you've misunderstood. I'm not the one playing tonight. Zhou Zhili sighed, feeling a bit stifled. Qing Jin blinked in surprise. What's that supposed to mean? Zhou Zhili clammed up. Zhang Duo took the hint, coughed dryly, and explained. When she heard the entire story, Qing Jin's eyebrows arched in surprise. So did they start fighting just now, or? Uh. For a moment, Zhang Duo didn't quite know how to explain. Zhou Xili looked a bit uncomfortable, too. Qing Jin's sharp eyes swept across the group, and she vaguely seemed to understand. A flabbergasted look arose on her fair and stunning features. No way! Su Yi has the bearing of a fallen immortal. How could he possibly be so lustful? Lady Qing Jin, you can't say that. After all, none of us really saw anything happen, Zhang Duo hurriedly explained. Qing Jin snorted coldly, not the least bit polite. When you do this sort of thing, do you let spectators gather around to watch? She increasingly suspected that Su Yi and Cha Jin were up to something unfit for the public eye. Otherwise, why would he make the sixth prince and his subordinates leave? I never would have guessed. I really wouldn't have guessed. And here I thought he was like me, wholeheartedly focused on pursuing the Tao. I truly wouldn't have guessed that he was no different from those men of the mundane world. Qing Jin sighed. She felt an inexplicable sense of melancholy and loss. Sui had actually come to the sand scouring waves in search of a woman. It was truly hard to believe. When you're just trying to make great content at. Zhou Zhili and Zhang Duo couldn't help but grimace. What does she mean, no different from the men of the mundane world? Isn't she insulting us along with him? It was then that two figures emerged from the pavilion. They were none other than Su Yi and Cha Jin. Everyone immediately looked over. 
Su Yi looked just as he had before, calm and aloof, hands behind his back. It was as if the heavens could crumble around him and he wouldn't even blink. But when he saw Cha Jin's current state, Zhou Zhuli's heart ached. This peerless beauty's hair was undone, her face was pallid, and her clothes were wrinkled. Although they dried somewhat and she'd attempted to straighten them out, they were still visibly drenched with sweat. Unlike before, her head hung low, and she obediently walked alongside Su Yi. Her charming smiles and radiant, stylish confidence had vanished. If you looked closely, you'd discover that she was trembling, faintly but uncontrollably. Whenever she looked up and saw Su Yi, the depths of her gaze filled with fear and awe. How could Zhou Zhili keep his imagination from running wild? When they saw this, Zhang Duo and the attendants' expressions were ambiguous. It seems. Young Lord Su has thoroughly dominated this peerless beauty? As for Qing Jin, she was already a bit despondent, and when she saw Cha Jin meekly and submissively accompanying Su Yi, her mood soured, and she felt an indescribable rage well within her. Qing Jin couldn't help but say, I would never have guessed you were that kind of person. But as soon as she said this, she froze as she realized that she'd slipped up. What? What's going on with me? First Immortal of the Sword First Immortal of First Immortal of the Sword Qing Jin's words made Su Yi frown. What's that supposed to mean? Zhou Zhili sensed that the atmosphere was someone off. He hurriedly smiled and asked, Young Lord Su, are you planning to leave with Miss Cha Jin? That's right. Su Yi nodded. Zhou Zhili had only asked conversationally, he didn't expect that Su Yi would actually give him an affirmative answer. Despite himself, he was stunned. Has he developed a taste for her? Does he plan to keep her for himself? Can't bear to part with her? Su Yi asked with great interest. Zhou Zhili's expression froze, and he forced a laugh. If you like her, that's all that matters. Miss Cha Jin is deeply fortunate to have the opportunity to serve at your side. He looked at Cha Jin, as if searching for signs of resistance or hesitation in her gaze, but to his surprise, he saw nothing but meek humility. She's just a courtesan, snorted Qing Jin. Whatever she does, she'll never escape her fate as a mere toy for men to play with. Cha Jin furrowed her brow, pursed her lips, and laughed, Miss Qing Jin, why is that I sense a hint of bitterness in your tone? Don't tell me you're jealous. Qing Jin was instantly displeased, and she said coldly, Who's jealous? Why would I envy a courtesan with no control over her destiny? She's no courtesan, and her background is no inferior to yours, said C.E. flatly. Qing Jin was stunned, but she obviously didn't believe it. You're comparing me to her? Don't you think that's a bit ridiculous? Su Yi turned to Cha Jin. Tell them. Cha Jin hesitated briefly, then took a deep breath and said with pride, I'm actually the daughter of one of the Great Wei's eight great prefectural kings, Xinjiang Kong. As well as an inner sect disciple of the Great Wei's top holy land, the Wheel of the Moon sect. Tell me, Miss Cha Jin, am I qualified to compare myself with you? When she said this, everyone fell silent. You're from the Great Way? Zhou Zhili was stunned, and he found it hard to believe. There was a perennial conflict between the Great Zhou and the Great Way, and they saw each other as bitter enemies. Their relationship was as terrible as it gets. Who would have guessed that Chang Jin hailed from the Great Way, and moreover, that her status was highly special? 
a wheel of the moon sect intersect disciple. The expression on Ching Jin's beautiful face shifted, she looked a bit flabbergasted. Why would a wheel of the moon sect intersect disciple disguise herself as a courtesan and appear here? When you approached me earlier, you actually had ulterior motives. Zhou Xili's expression was unsightly. And here he thought it was his elegant bearing that won him Cha Jin's favor. Who would have thought that the reality of the situation was so cruel? Sixth Highness, you have your second brother to blame for that. Without his orders, do you really think I would have gotten close to you? Cha Jin's gaze was cold, and her brow carried faint hints of disdain. This dealt Zhou Xili an enormous blow, and his expression darkened. Why would an esteemed inheritor of the Wheel of the Moon sect work beneath his second highness? I'm afraid you had an ulterior motive for that, too. Am I right? asked Qing Jin coldly. That's right, said Cha Jin frankly. She no longer disguised herself or hid anything, and there was no longer any need to play the part of a courtesan. She could say whatever was on her mind. To her surprise, it was a wonderful, relaxing feeling. Zhang Duo and the others were instantly on guard, their expressions unfriendly. From their perspective, as an agent of the Great Way, Cha Jin was the enemy of their nation, someone to be killed on sight. Young Lord Su, might you hand her over to us? Qing Jin's sharp eyes glinted like swords, flashing with cold light. Sui couldn't help but laugh. Don't you think that request is a bit excessive? Qing Jin's eyes widened. Excessive? She's a spy from the Great Way, and she's hidden herself at the Second Prince's side and attempted to approach His Sixth Highness. She's obviously up to no good. Sui's smile frosted over, and his brow furrowed. Didn't you proclaim yourself a true cultivator unconcerned with mundane affairs? Why have you suddenly changed your mind? Qing Jin's expression froze, and for a moment, she didn't know what to say. Cha Jin chuckled. Young lord, that's easy to explain. The Great Zhou's Hidden Dragon Sword sect has always seen our Wheel of the Moon sect as their enemy. As one of their inheritors, it's only natural that she detest me. A spy like you has no right to speak here, snapped Qing Jin. Do you really think I won't kill you where you stand? Her aura was cold and harsh, and murderous intent surged around her. Enough. Su Yi's gaze was sharp. Su Yi, are you planning to protect her? Or have you simply gone mad with lust and let her good looks muddle your brain? Whap! A resounding slap followed, leaving a red, five-fingered imprint in her stunningly beautiful face. Everyone fell silent. Even Qing Jin was dumbstruck. She stared at Su Yi in disbelief, she never would have guessed Su Yi would actually strike her. Bear this in mind, Cha Jin is now my serving girl. I certainly can't be bothered to concern myself with any other status she might have. Su Yi's gaze was utterly aloof. Given our pre-existing friendly relationship, I'll let this go this time, but if you keep pushing your luck, don't blame me for turning my back on old associates. Qing Jin's delicate frame quivered. Her face alternated between green and white, and her heart filled with shame, dejection, confusion, and indescribable bewilderment. She never would have guessed that Su Yi would slap her over Cha Jin of all people. She'd never experienced anything like this before, and for a moment, her mind went completely blank. Zhou Zhili, Zhang Duo, and the other onlookers were stunned too. They glanced at each other. Even Cha Jin herself was a bit surprised. This. Should I take this as Su Yi protecting me? Isn't he afraid of thoroughly offending the Hidden Dragon Sword sect and the Sixth Prince? Waves of emotion rose and fell within her heart, and she found it hard to calm down. She suddenly realized that she felt a hint of secret delight. 
This feeling stunned even her. Why would I feel like this? But Su Yi's thoughts were nowhere near as complex. The way he saw it, before you hit a dog, you had to check and see who owned it. Besides, Cha Jin was still useful to him. How could he just hand her over? Of course, what really displeased him with Qing Jin's attitude. The moment they laid eyes on each other, she started mocking him out of nowhere, and now she dared push her luck even further? Did she really think him that good-natured? Next, he glanced at Zhou Zhili. What about you? Do you see me as your enemy now? Zhou Zhili jumped, then said deliberately, Young Lord Su, if you've chosen to keep Cha Jin by your side, there must be a reason for it. From my perspective, you've effectively removed a latent threat from my life. If anything, I ought to thank you. That cold, indifferent gaze of Su Yi's put him under enormous pressure. Well said. That's a decent answer. Su Yi nodded. He couldn't be bothered to remain here any longer, so he headed outside. Cha Jin hurried after him. That's right, he's not even afraid of my Wheel of the Moon sect, so why would he care about the Hidden Dragon Sword sect or the Sixth Prince? When she saw that tall, lean figure, Cha Jin felt a wide array of complex emotions. There was humiliation, suppression, terror, and intimidation. She ought to hate Su Yi with all her heart. Yet what just happened dispersed some of her initial resentment, to the point that she even felt a hint of unspoken glee. This left her incomparably distressed and conflicted. Meanwhile, as Zhou Zhili watched Su Yi and Cha Jin leave, he sighed. Every inch of him relaxed. But when he saw Qing Jin standing there in silence, his heart tensed, and he hurriedly asked, Marshal Ant, are you all right? Qing Jin's expression was icy, and her tone was wooden. He slapped me right across the face. Tell me, do you think I'm all right? Zhou Zhili grimaced. Marshal Ant, I wouldn't have guessed Su Yi would be so heartless either. To think he'd cast aside all pretenses of cordiality over Cha Jin. Then, he took a deep breath. But rest assured. In the future, if I ascend to the imperial throne, I'll be certain to get justice for you. Qin Jin laughed coldly. He's only seventeen, and he's only in the qi accumulation realm, yet he can slaughter grandmasters as if they were chickens. Even if you really get the opportunity to sit upon the throne, I'm afraid he'll already have become a peerless expert by then. How exactly will you get justice for me then? That. Zhou Zhili didn't know what to say to that. When she saw how ill at ease he looked, Qin Jin shook her head with flagging interest. Let's go. I don't want to spend any more time in the Cloud River Prefecture, and I never want to see Sui ever again. When she spoke that last part, her voice carried a hint of irrepressible indignation. All right. We'll begin our journey to the Imperatorial Provincial Capital tomorrow. Zhou Zhili hurriedly pounded his chest and agreed. It was only after he exited the sand scouring waves that Su Yi realized that Huang Qianjun had yet to emerge. Forget it. I won't wait for him. He might very well be in the throes of passion as we speak. If I make him leave now, I'll ruin his good time. Su Yi was a normal man too, he naturally knew better than to spoil a moment like this. Can you drive a carriage? asked Su Yi. Uh. Cha Jin froze. Yes, I can. Su Yi walked right into the carriage, then slumped lazily in his seat. Take us back to Bottlegourd Alley. Cha Jin simply bit her lip then took on the role of carriage driver. She gripped the reins, then steered the horses away. It can be hard to make great work when it's stolen from. Throughout their journey back, she attracted countless flabbergasted gazes. 
countless men cursed and spat. Most likely, they simply couldn't understand what kind of scumbag would make such a delicate, peerless beauty act as his carriage driver. Whoever he was, he deserved death by a thousand cuts. To Cha Jean herself, this was an unprecedented and novel experience. After all, as an inner sect disciple of the Wheel of the Moon sect, as well as the daughter of a prefectural king, she was a noble born into luxury. Throughout her years of life, she'd never done anything remotely comparable to driving a horse-drawn carriage. Yet it seemed that in Su Yi's eyes, making her drive him around was simply a matter of course. It seems he really does plan to order me around like a servant girl. Cha Jean sighed to herself, suddenly conflicted. If her father, master, friends, relatives, and sectmates found out about this, how would they respond? But Su Yi had no outward reaction at all. When they arrived back at Humble Tranquility Cottage, he just sprawled out in the wicker chair beneath the gazebo again. There was nothing for it. He'd always been lazy when he wasn't cultivating. Do you know how to brew tea, wash clothes, and cook? asked Su Yi. Cha Jean grimaced. It's just as I thought. In his eyes, I've already sunk to the level of a serving girl. She thought it over, then whispered, I've never done anything like that before, but I can learn. Sui couldn't help but nod to himself. Her attitude, at least, is worthy of praise. He ordered, starting tomorrow, you'll be washing and folding my clothes, as well as brewing and pouring my tea. During your spare time, you'll keep the courtyard and garden in order. If there's still time left afterward, you can use it as you see fit. Cha Jin's scalp went numb. Is he planning to make me single-handedly take responsibility for every chore and odd job around the house? She asked tentatively, young lord, why not just hire a group of servants? Su Yi glanced up at her. Feeling wronged? Cha Jin hurriedly shook her head. Even if she did feel wronged, there was no way she'd say it out loud. Chapter 152 and Man Among Men, A Role Model Sui said lightly, it's dangerous being near me. This is no place for ordinary people. It was already late at night. In the past, Feng Xiaofeng would be here to share a drink and conversation, while Feng Xiaoran would stand off to the sides, keeping their glasses full. Huang Qianjun played the part of the straight man and offset the atmosphere. Alas, starting tomorrow, even Huang Qianjun would leave his side. Why? Their situations were different, so the goals were different too. This, perhaps, was what they meant when they said gathering and separation are both a part of life. Cha Jin, meanwhile, was stunned. She would never have guessed that someone so callous and indifferent would refuse to hire ordinary servants out of concern for their safety. This answer even dealt her heart an enormous shock. She vaguely sensed that she now understood Sui a little better, but she also found it increasingly hard to see through him. He. Just what kind of person is he? Sui thought for a moment, then took out two stalks of spiritual medicine. Simmer these stalks of jade seed snow ginseng into a soup and give it to Huang Qianjun when he gets back. With that, he got up and went back to his room. Cha Jin stood there, opened her mouth, and was just about to ask where she was supposed to sleep when she forced the words back down in his eyes, I'm nothing but a servant. Why should he concern himself with where I spend the night? Besides, I should count my lucky stars that he didn't let his bestial nature flare up and demand I spend the night in his chambers. Just thinking this made her cheeks burn bright red, and she went to look for the kitchen. Uh, how exactly am I supposed to make this into soup? Cha Jin was at a bit of a loss. Others had waited upon her from a young age. Even after infiltrating the great Zhou and playing the part of a courtesan, others attended to her meals and basic needs. How could she possibly know how to make soup? 
It's just soup. It can't possibly be any harder than cultivating. Besides, it's not like Su Yi's going to drink this himself. Even if it doesn't taste good, it doesn't matter. Cha Jin thought to herself. Time slipped by in dribs and drabs. Gradually, the smell of burning wafted from the kitchens, followed by a bang. It seemed something had exploded. What happened? Su Yi immediately rushed over, he assumed they were under attack. But when he saw what was happening in the kitchens, the corners of his lips twitched imperceptibly. Dense smoke billowed out of a cracked earthenware crockpot, and soup spilled from the cracks. Cha Jin hung her head like a child caught in the act and sheepishly fidgeted with the hems of her clothes. Her fair and beautiful face was now black with ash, and she was coated in soot. Her big, bright eyes were filled with shame and unease. Young Lord, I. Cha Jin didn't know what to do. She was just about to explain when Sui shook his head. Don't fiddle around with it any further. I'm worried you'll burn the whole kitchen down. With that, he turned and left. Cha Jin stood there in a momentary daze, then gnashed her teeth. It's just soup. I refuse to believe I can't make it properly. But at least for now, she dared not try again for fear of disturbing Su Yi's rest. She left the kitchen and, heedless of everything else, went to bathe. However, to her dismay, she couldn't figure out how to draw water out of the well. After several attempts and with great difficulty, she finally managed to obtain enough water only to realize that she had nothing to wash herself with, nor did she have combs or makeup. It's hard being a servant. She smiled bitterly and with an indescribable sense of frustration. Everything has gone too smoothly for me. Now that I've hit rock bottom, I cannot adapt. No wonder Master always said that only after cultivating within the mundane world can you comprehend the countless facets of mortal life, with all their ups and downs. Cha Jin sat alone beneath the gazebo, her thoughts elsewhere as time slipped by. The Sand Scouring Waves Huang Qianjun emerged from the building. A cold wind swept by, and he shuddered. Brother Huang, were you satisfied with tonight's arrangements? Yuan Luoyu followed him, laughing heartily, his eyes betraying his mocking glee. Huang Qianjun looked weak and fragile. His face was pallid, there were dark rings around his eyes, and there were numerous red hickeys all over his neck. When he walked, his legs trembled uncontrollably. It was like he'd been squeezed dry from exertion. It was okay. Huang Qianjun took a deep breath and said with an air of feigned indifference, it was just thirteen beauties in one night, right? I just had to get through it. Yuan Luoyu stuck up his thumb in admiration. An ordinary man couldn't bear so much. Only a top-tier talent like you could achieve such glorious results. You're a model for all men to aspire to. Huang Qianjun said irritably, Come on, I know you're making fun of me. Why would you do this to me? You're vicious indeed, young master Yuan. If I lose interest in women after this, I might very well hold you accountable. Yuan Luoyu was instantly on guard. I just think of you as a brother. You'd better not get any other ideas. Fei! Huang Qianjin rolled his eyes. There's no way I'd do something like that. As he spoke, he staggered and almost fell. Yuan Luoyu hurriedly supported this run out, soft footed shrimp. Bro, how about I take you home? As they walked into the distance, Huang Qianjun couldn't help but recall Su Yi. Right, brother Su. He set aside his physical weakness, now he felt guilty instead. I already asked Madame Fangxiu. She said that Master Su seized a cherished beauty from right under the sixth prince's nose. 
They suspect that he's already thoroughly dominated and tamed Cha Jin by now. As he said this, Yuan Luoyu couldn't help but feel as if he stood, awed, at the foot of a grand mountain. Look at Master Su. He even dared seize a woman the sixth prince took a fancy to. That's incredible. You're kidding, right? Huang Qin Jun was flabbergasted. How could Brother Su do something like that just because he coveted her beauty? No, he was undoubtedly here for revenge. What do you mean? I'm not kidding, he already led her away. She's going to follow him going forward. Suddenly, he said warningly, Brother Huang, you must remember, you are not to have any untoward thoughts regarding Cha Jin. Nothing causes a disaster faster than succumbing to beauty. You know what they mean when they speak of dangerous beauties, right? Actually, you ought to know better than me. Come on! I'm enlisting tomorrow. How could I be in any mood to worry about that? That's good. I was just worried that your excessive lustfulness might bring you harm, said Yuan Luoyu with a sage nod. This novel is available on Pori.com. Huang Qianjun instantly felt warm inside. Young Master Yuan, I didn't realize you were so considerate. Let's hang out again sometime. Next time, it's my turn to treat you. Yuan Luoyu laughed. I was waiting for you to say that. The two wrapped their arms around each other's shoulders. They weren't brothers, but they were like brothers. Friendship between men was just this simple. When they left the sand scouring waves, Yuan Luoyu personally carried Huang Qianjun back to Bottle Gourd Alley on horseback. It was only after seeing him back to Humble Tranquility Cottage that Yuan Luoyu bade farewell. It was the middle of the night, and a cool breeze blew past. By now, Huang Qianjun had sobered up somewhat, and he cautiously knocked on the door. Brother Su, I'm back. If it's inconvenient to get up, I can go over the walls. Creak. The door opened, revealing a face covered in dust. Huang Qianjun jumped in fright before realizing that it was just Cha Jin. He exhaled. Miss Cha Jean, you're not with Brother Su? He initially assumed that she was here to warm Su Yi's bed. To his surprise, it seemed that wasn't the case at all. Young Lord Huang, you're finally back. Cha Jean glanced at him. There's a few things I'd like you to teach me. Teach, said Huang Qianjun hurriedly. I don't know about that, but if you need help with something, please ask. He subconsciously recalled Yuan Luoyu's warning, and he saw Cha Jin as Su Yi's woman, so his tone was polite and respectful. Young Master Huang, it seems you've misunderstood. I'm now just a servant, my job is to wash and fold laundry, brew and pour tea, attend to the garden, and clean the residence. In short, I'll be responsible for all odd jobs and housework from now on, whispered Cha Jin. She couldn't just let Huang Qianjun treat her with such politeness, she dared not. A servant? I won't lie to you, an opportunity to work as Brother Su's servant is unquestionably a grand stroke of fortune, laughed Huang Qianjun. How could he really treat her as a servant? One way or another, she now followed his brother Su, so he treat her accordingly. Fortune? Do you have any idea how he made me submit to this? Cha Jin's spirits sank. She then proceeded to welcome Huang Qianjun into the courtyard and pepper him with questions. For example, where did they keep the toiletries and makeup? Which room was she supposed to sleep in? What should she do about Su Yi's daily meals? Etc., etc. Even Huang Qianjun was flabbergasted. It seems Brother Su really has made this stunning enchantress his servant girl. This level of skill sure is something. 
He's a man among men, a role model for all to look up to. Huang Qianjun exclaimed. He finally understood how it felt to gaze up at a vast mountain and what it meant to be a skilled disciplinarian. Morning the next day. The spirit marshal marquis, Chen Sheng, and Zhang Yirin led a group of young people from Blue River Sword Manor. Their next destination, Humble Tranquility Cottage. Where is the marquis taking us? En route, Li Mayun couldn't help but turn and ask his companion. They say he plans to bid an extremely important person farewell, but I'm not sure who exactly it is either, whispered a valiant-looking young man. Someone important enough for the Marquis to bid farewell in person? How lofty of an existence must they be? They're surely a top-tier, long-established expert of the prefectural capital. There were seven or eight youths in total, all of them good seedlings Chinching had selected personally. They were about to leave for Blood Thistle Yao Mountain alongside him. An important person. Li Mayun thought to himself, in the Cloud River Prefectural Capital, who but the leaders of the four peak-level factions is worthy of a personal farewell from the Marquis. And I how, meanwhile, inwardly steeled himself. He was full of hope for the future. I'm definitely going to establish myself during my time in the Green Plate Army. I just have to make something of myself. Then, when I next return to the Cloud River Prefectural Capital, which of those lofty authority figures will dare look down on me? Nanning, meanwhile, was smug and complacent. Although it's extremely rare for women to enlist, that will only highlight how extraordinary I am, and it'll make it easier for me to attract the attention of the powerful and influential. With the methods at my disposal, is there any need to fear failing to connect with those of high rank? They say birds need skies high enough to fly in, and they're right. With this chance, I, Nanning, will change my destiny. This time, the Spirit Marshal Marquis had selected only eight intersect disciples, and of them, she was the only woman. To blood circulation realm cultivators like them, if they wanted to advance further down the path of the Marshal Dao, they had only two choices. Either they passed the test and were selected to cultivate in Heaven's Origin Academy, or they joined the army. The reason for this was simple, although Blue River Sword Manor was strong, it lacked methods and resources for chi accumulation realm cultivators. Thus, when a disciple's cultivation reached the later stages of the blood circulation realm, they had to consider their next steps. The Wei Li Mayun, and I Hao, Nanning, and the others saw it, being chosen by the spirit marshal marquis was no different from leaping over the dragon's gate. They now had a chance to reach greater heights of the Martial Dao. Chapter 153 Farewells The Yuan Family Father, today, Brother Huang will leave to join the army. I'm going to go see him off, said Yuan Luoyu respectfully. Yuan Wutong immediately made his decision. Take some presents with you. Stop by the treasury and pick out something good. Our gift might be intended for Huang Qianjun, but what matters is that Master Su will see it, we absolutely cannot be half-hearted about this. Let's take this chance to display our Yuan family's sincerity. All right. Yuan Luoyu straightforwardly agreed. Yuan Wutong snorted coldly. Last night, your expenditures at the sand scouring waves weren't the least bit small. Out of respect for Master Su, I'll let you off just this once, but you'd best hurry back to the Red Scale Army, you brat. Thank you, Father, for showing mercy. Yuan Luoyu sighed in relief and dashed off compliantly, but he was smiling with his eyes. Father, I'm going too. Yuan Luoshi rose and, without even asking if Yuan Wutong agreed, ran off excitedly. Yuan Wutong instantly felt helpless. It's true what they say, you can't keep your grown daughter home for long. Humble Tranquility Cottage Zhang Yiren stepped forward and knocked gently on the gate, but this time, Huang Qianjun wasn't the one to open the door. 
Instead, it was a transcendently beautiful young woman. Although she only wore a plain skirt and a simple hairpin, with no makeup or other ornaments, it was hard to disguise her fair features or delicate beauty. Miss Cha Jean? Zhang Yirin was stunned. He'd seen this stunningly beautiful courtesan once back aboard the tower ship, but he wouldn't have expected to encounter her again at Humble Tranquility Cottage. Li Mayun and Ai Hao and the other youths were stunned too, Cha Jin's absolute beauty left them dumbstruck. Quite a few of them felt suddenly insecure, and they dared not meet her gaze. Nanning sighed to herself. She was a woman, but even she was even a bit jealous of Cha Jin's good looks. Thinking about it, even if she searched all of Blue River Sword Manor, only when Ling Shua could stand on equal ground with whoever this woman was. Cha Jin smiled, her gentle voice reminiscent of the jingling of bells. Greetings, Commander Zhang. Might I ask if you're here to see our young lord? Some of the men almost couldn't take it. This voice, this temperament, this appearance. It was just too much. Even Qin Qin couldn't help but reveal a strange light in his eyes. My young friend Su sure is something, he even took such a stunning girl as a servant. That's right. We're here to see young Lord Su. Zhang Yiren nodded. By then, Huang Qianjun had already heard them, and he came over to invite them in with a smile. Marquis, Commander Zhang, please come in. Zhang Yiren furrowed his brow. Brother Huang, you've got dark rings around your eyes, and your aura is weak and depleted. What happened? Uh. Huang Qianjun instantly felt awkward. Nothing happened. Suddenly, he noticed some familiar faces, and he frowned. Li Mayun, what are you doing here? Li Mayun had long since noticed Huang Qianjun, and he was flabbergasted beyond belief. Especially when he saw him chatting casually with Zhang Yiren, this sent tidal waves coursing through Li Mayun's heart. He almost dared not believe his eyes. Oh. And you guys are here too. Huang Qianjun noticed an Ai Hao and Nanning too, and his expression went a bit strange. An Ai Hao and Nanning were stunned, it was like they'd just seen a ghost. Earlier, they couldn't help but try and guess just who was worthy of a personal farewell visit from the Marquis. They certainly wouldn't have guessed they'd see Huang Qianjun. There was no way they'd forget that fateful night in the Mountain of River Palace on the ninth floor of the House of Prosperity. Huang Qianjun had been by Su Yi's side the entire time. In other words, the moment they laid eyes on Huang Qianjun and Ai Hao and Nanning instantly guessed who the Marquis was here to visit. For a moment, they found it hard to stay calm. An incredible array of emotions flitted across their faces. Brother Huang, do you know them too? Zhang Yiren couldn't help but ask. That's only natural, we're old acquaintances. Huang Qianjun laughed heartily. Zhang Yiren laughed back. That's excellent. They'll be joining us on our trip back to Blood Thistle Yao Mountain. Since you already know each other, you can take this time to get closer to each other. As they spoke, they entered the courtyard. At almost the exact same time, Sui leisurely strolled out of his room, clad in his usual blue with his hair tied up. He looked clean and neat, with an aloof, transcendent air. It really is him. And I how and Nanning both cried out internally, and they felt an indescribable sense of loss. Earlier, they were immensely proud that the Spirit Marshal Marquis had chosen them. They thought this meant they were destined to soar into the heavens and realize their ambitions. Who would have thought that Su Yi, someone the same age as them, had long since left them in the dust? He was now so lofty that the Spirit Marshal Marquis would pay him a personal visit. The difference between them was readily apparent. Li Mayun silently clenched his fists. Inside, he was dejected too. 
At first, he saw the Wen family's live-in son-in-law as nothing. He didn't take Sui seriously at all, but now. He'd already grown powerful to the point that Li Mayun could only look up to him. He could only eat his dust, he'd never catch up. The other youths wore complex expressions too. One after another, they recognized Su Yi. To them, it seemed utterly absurd. What could be more ridiculous than this? After all, just one year ago, Su Yi was still that reject without a cultivation. But now, he'd climbed so high that even the spirit marshal marquis came to bid him farewell in person. Young Lord Su, I'm here to bid you farewell. We'll soon proceed to the harbor just outside the city and board a ship back to Blood Thistle Yao Mountain. Qin Jing stepped forward, smiled, and clasped his fist. Sui nodded, then took out a spiritual sword and passed it to Huang Qian Jun. I don't have anything good to offer you, so just take this weapon. The blade emanated a faint purple glow. This was the weapon he claimed after slaying Nan Wenxiang, reflecting purple. A grandmaster weaponsmith of the Jade Capital, Chai Yong, had forged it personally. When she saw it, the look in Cha Jin's eyes went strange. Li Mayun and the others, meanwhile, were dazed. They naturally realized that Su Yi's casual gift was in fact an extraordinary spiritual blade. Brother Su, I. The rims of Huang Qianjuan's eyes reddened. When the moment of departure truly arrived, it was hard to avoid reluctance and sadness. But before he could speak, Su Yi cut him off. I can't stand it when men put on airs. No need for nonsense. Uh. Huang Qianjun froze as Qin Zheng and Zhang Yiren burst into laughter. Brother Huang, my sister and I have come to see you off. Yuan Luoyu's valiant voice emanated from beyond the gates. Then, he and Yuan Luoyu strode inside. When he saw Qin Zheng standing there, Yuan Luoyu was briefly stunned. Then, he hurriedly saluted. This junior is called Yuan Luoyu. Greetings, Marquis. Qin Jing nodded. I know you. You're Yuan Wutong's second son, a commander of 10,000 men working beneath Xin Zhousong. I heard he praised you as the Red Scale Valiant, and he says you have the talent of a future king or marquis. Well, how about it? Any interest in taking up office in my Green Plate Army? Yuan Luoyu was caught off guard. I'm afraid I can't make that decision on my own. If you're ever interested in the future, you're welcome to come looking for me at any time, said Qin Zheng. A quick look at. We'll leave you more fulfilled. Yuan Luoyu smiled and agreed. Then, he took out a jade box and passed it to Huang Qianjun. This is a set of thousand-scale armor. Brother Huang, consider it a token of my friendship. Thousand-scale armor. Qin Jing was stunned. Your father sure spared no expense. You can't buy armor like that with ten thousand gold. It's enough to withstand a full-force attack from a qi accumulation expert. He understood that although this gift was for Huang Qianjun, they were putting on a show for Sui to see. At the end of the day, Huang Qianjun's prestige was insufficient for Yuan Wutong to spend so much on him. At first, Huang Qianjun thought nothing of this gift, but when he heard the marquee words, he was stunned. He sighed, Young Master Yuan, you really are my good brother. Nearby, Li Mayun and I Hao and Nanning saw this. All of them were inwardly displeased. Back then, Li Mayun was the leading figure of Guangling City's younger generation, while Huang Qianjun was just an infamous silk pants. Who'd have thought that things would change so dramatically? Their statuses had changed completely. And I Hao and Nanning were keenly aware that Huang Qianjun was basking in Suyi's light, that was the only reason the Yuan family attached such importance to him. 
they couldn't help but envy Huang Qianjuan's good luck. Before long, Qin Jun led his group away. When they realized that Su Yi wasn't going to pursue their former grudges, Li Mayun and Ai Hao, and Nanning sighed in relief. But this was also precisely what left them so bitter and upset. For him to simply let their grudges go meant that, in Su Yi's eyes, they were unworthy of notice. The gap between them was so huge that they already inhabited different words. After watching Huang Qianjun leave with the Marquis and Zhang Yirin, Su Yi returned to the courtyard. Master Su, I'll be returning to my duties at the Red Scale Army shortly. If you ever visit the Imperatorial Provincial Capital, please grant me the opportunity to take you out for a drink, said Yuan Luoyu. You mean like what you did last night? Yuan Luoshi snorted coldly and glared at her amorous, dissolute elder brother. Yuan Luoyu instantly felt a bit awkward. Cha Jin's expression went a little strange too. Only Su Yi remained easygoing. He raised his teacup and took a sip. That's all in the future. We can discuss that later. Master Su, are you planning to leave the Cloud River Prefectural Capital soon too? Yuan Luashi couldn't help but ask. That's right. Su Yi nodded. His qi accumulation cultivation had yet to achieve full spiritual awakening of the acupoints even after all this time. If he lingered in the prefectural capital, there was no way he'd catch the lucky break he needed to break through. Yuan Luashi pressed, then where are you going? This time, Cha Jin pricked up her ears too. Hard to say. Su Yi shook his head. He just knew he wanted to leave, but first, he at least had to see Wen Ling Xue again. When she heard his answer, Yuan Luashi couldn't help but feel dejected. Master Su, on the third day of the third lunar month, after my father's birthday celebrations are over, I'll be leaving too. I'm going to continue my cultivation at Heaven's Origin Academy. I don't know if I'll see you again. Heaven's Origin Academy? Su Yi was briefly stunned. In that case, we might very well meet again after all. Yuan Luashi was instantly delighted. Don't tell me you're going to Heaven's Origin Academy too, Master Su? That's right. Su Yi nodded. How could he possibly forget the woman who was nominally his wife? Of course, there was also Wei Xing Yang and the other young master types. If he didn't deal with the punks intending to cuckold him, he'd never rest at ease. Before long, the Yuan siblings bade farewell and left, while Su Yi returned to his room and began his usual cultivation routine. He temporarily couldn't make any progress with his cultivation, but he could practice the Universal Self Embodiment Sutra to temper his soul power. He left Cha Jin all alone in the courtyard. She stood there for a moment before silently picking up a broom and starting to sweep up the fallen leaves and flower petals. Meanwhile, at Blue River Sword Manor, Xu Guqing retracted her gaze, a satisfied look on her stunning face. Not bad. Both your talent and your temperament are enough that you could have entered Heaven's Origin Academy a long time ago. When Ling Xue bowed. You're exaggerating, senior. I already promised your sister that I'd take you with me when I return to Heaven's Origin Academy. Get your things in order, and we'll be on our way momentarily. When Ling Xue was instantly startled. We're leaving right now? <laughs>